Welcome everyone to another episode of the Plastic Hearts Podcast. My name is Fonzie. I'm joined by my co-host, indie game dev extraordinaire, Gavin Jones. Gavin, how are you doing? I'm I'm just uh, like a like a saucy saucy meatball over here. <laughs> is that because of the heat? I see the sun is setting on that side. Is it does it bake you in that room or what? What's going on? Oh my am I super glowing? Uh no, you're no, good. It's a little toasty in here. Um no, I just I didn't have a, a clever thing to say. So those were, <laughs> nor did I. Those were the very first words that popped into my mind. Um, <laughs> so I was just watching last week tonight, and uh, John Oliver said like the meatball is the anal beads of the Italian cuisine. So. <laughs> That's perfect and, and horrifying at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, how'd your week how go? You I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Nothing uh, crazy going on um yeah we talked earlier about the pc build and building a pc and getting all the parts in and i'm nerding out hardcore and it's a great time to be alive it's also not a great time to be alive but at least for this small you know a little bit of hope i get in the in my life this is it's pretty fun it's a good time if you can stay alive i think yeah. is the, the trick that's so. very true <laughs> nice 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 yeah what you played been, some uh, what you've been playing i know we kind of played some games uh on saturday together which was cool we did that was pretty dope so we tried the whole steam online link thing whatever it's called and played some games there but uh i did finish um timefall 2 the campaign right. i didn't realize it's it's pretty short so it's actually really doable it's like maybe four hours five hours ish well that's not bad did you get the chance to finish it uh i have not uh i did i did dumb thing i was playing some team fight tactics but yeah i need to i'm still <laughs> at that part i told you last where uh you get the gun that can turn on and off switches and you're doing yeah. it while you're running. Uh, so I need to get through there. Um, yeah, not finished yet. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, the, I guess the thing that was weird for me is when I watched streamers playing it, I came in about where I am now. And I remember thinking, uh, what, what's the character's name? Like B12 or whatever. Uh, yeah, B something. You're right. Why, why am B I blanking something. on it? Yeah, yeah it, it seemed like when I came in there on the streams, he had a whole lot of personality. It seems like this is about where his personality picks up. Because before then, he really doesn't have much. Yeah, very is... robotic because, yeah, he's an AI robot. But you're right. You can, yeah. it's it's a little bit, you know, like a taste of like a Terminator kind of thing where you're, but the more you interact with him, because you do have like the two dialogue options, he can kind of get more character out of him that way too. Right, yeah. So it's been fun. Yeah, uh, I really dug it. I was surprised how how awesome it was it's we talked about last week it's like we keep hearing that's a campaign that keeps getting thrown around and how amazing it was but i guess you know it was kind of um just overshadowed by the how good the multiplayer is and it's right. it's awesome i mean it's and it's a bummer some of our stories here are about how the fact that there's not another titanfall in the works so it's a bummer to to read that after this weekend when i had such a blast playing this campaign yeah yeah what else what else did you play did you play anything else or what, what was your favorite thing that we played on saturday because that was a that was a goof fest for those uh who weren't there on saturday with us <laughs> right <laughs> uh, we were trying out steam link and uh we played a couple of different games and uh it worked it worked really well i was very surprised you said you didn't really feel much in the way of lag at all right no really and i would i would see the um system like compensate by sometimes the resolution would be brought down but like the the actual input there was no very little lag that's awesome yeah but some of the fun ones were uh there was that the first one mount your friends that was pretty fun because it's so nerve-wracking getting used to the controls but then once you do it's like it's it's a challenge every time you want to kind of like get more efficient at it and 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 you know over do it better like every round it's it's pretty fun yeah i'd love to see some people that are really good at that game just give it a shot oh i'm sure <laughs> Yeah, because it reminds me of that like Ben Foddy game we we're talking about where you the controls are terrible but they're supposed to be, but that adds to the the feeling of success when you actually are like just moving through that that game. Yeah. I think it would have been nice if I could have found some better co op. Uh I was kind of looking into it later. Uh, the problem is a lot of the co op ones are like a big commitment. I guess what we could have done is like a uh an overcooked uh or the one that I didn't think of was Bro Force. Uh, would have been great. Oh, I have okay. Bro Force. Gotcha. Um, you know what? Also, there's that. It's a newer game, but uh, it's called it's called Moving Out. I want to say it's from the same devs of Overcooked. It, it very least has the same style to it. But uh, right. that could have been dope too, because it's a lot of depending on each other and screaming at each other, and you know, trying to work together, and it's a lot of that. There's that. Yeah. There's there's Moving Out. There's a game that's almost identical to Moving Out. It's like Mover Simulator or something. Then there's the one where you're like 
you have the stretcher, right? You're running the stretcher. Oh, sure. You're trying to rescue people. So there's a bunch kind of in that that genre that are seem kind of fun. Apparently, Knights and Bikes is pretty good as well. Mm. Uh, but that seems like a bit more of a commitment. So it's uh, a lot of opportunities, though. You know what I did try a little bit as well on the Switch is that game. It won a couple of awards um, maybe last year or the year before that, but it's called Garagoa, if I'm pronouncing that right. It's like that puzzle game where you keep overlapping stuff to make sense of what's going on. So G-O-R-O-G-O-A, Garogoa. Can you spell it's that like one a, more time? Yeah, G-O-R-O-G-O-A. It's a, it's a puzzle game. It's like, I think it's an indie title, but it was on a lot of the Game of the Year stuff last year, I want to say. Okay, yeah, I, I thought I knew what you are talking about. I remember this was announced at, I want to say, like one of the Game Awards, and it was sort of like a... I think it came immediately after something huge. Um, but yeah, it looks really cool. Have you have you beaten this? Are you still I haven't. I just kind of lightly dabbled into it. And you're, uh, it's really cool because they don't tell you what to do. So you're just kind of tapping along and manipulating stuff and figuring out the puzzles. And they do it in a brilliant way where you feel like you are figuring it out, you know, in real time. Um, but yeah, it's really cool, really beautiful. It's like a storybook kind of, you know, style to it. But I remember hearing such good stuff about it. And so I'd, it was like, I don't know, five bucks on, on Switch. And so downloaded it jumped in and yeah that kind of reminds me of another game i played uh i i'd be curious to see if this kind of fits a similar description but there was a game i played because it was free on epic loading up now how long is this gonna take (laughs) uh there it is gnog g-n-o-g and it's just sort of like you had these little I don't know, almost like Polly Pocket Playmobil things where you're sort of just interacting at it. And I wonder if this would kind of kind of toe this description of well as not so much a game so much as a interactive toy. Yeah. Which isn't, you know, not a bad thing. Right. Yeah, I want to play more of that. It keeps reminding me of how much uh that one game kicked my ass. Is it uh oh god, it's like Baba's You. Yeah, there you go, Baba's You. Oh, gotcha. Really? <laughs> it's just that so fucking hard. Difficulty. Well, it doesn't remind me of that level of difficulty, but I was playing it and I kept thinking the whole time, it's like I wish I was smart enough to play <laughs> Baba's You. I wanted, you know, finish that. I want to see how because I imagine that was just the beginning where I tapped out. I imagine it kept getting just more and more complicated. I don't I don't know how anyone has ever beaten that game. Uh, looking at a speed run of it, I'm just like, I, don't, I understand oh less by the second. Uh, the, the one other game I ended up playing was uh, some Team Fight Tactics, which uh, is nice and relaxing. And I was thinking about, I was actually thinking about something else on the way home because I've always really wanted somebody to do a game uh, whether it's very rhythm based, right? And like the combat yeah. is very rhythm. It's so impossible to really do that because uh, the player's always going to throw off the rhythm. Uh, and that's something they even said with Crypt of the Necrodancers. There's a huge window for error because right when you need to be your most precise is usually when you're most freaked out and you're going to be your least precise. Um, and there was just like a thumping song on my way home. Like somebody should do that with the tactics game. They just have the, you know, the attacks go to the rhythm and maybe like the song changes up. So maybe, you know, the bass picks up. So you want like more characters out there. Uh, that attack at the rhythm of the bass. And I think you could do something really interesting with it. But that being said, I think these tactics games sort of have a reliance on, you want to have familiar characters that people see it and they kind of know what they do. It sounds like Disney now has their own uh, auto chess game and we'll see it. But I think that's going to still have that reliance. So I don't. Gotcha. You know what that that reminds me? I'm out. (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're talking about the rhythm based stuff did you ever finish or jump into that switch game it was the zelda um cadence of hyrule yeah yeah did you ever try that i should i really should considering i liked uh crypt of the necro dancer i think right. the only thing i didn't like playing crypt of the necro dancer on a controller i really like playing it on a uh the dance pad keyboard yeah. okay <laughs> dance pad. i never did play it with a dance pad i have a dance pad to play it with uh but i never did because at the time I was living uh, on the third floor and I gotcha. didn't want to, uh, you know, I could, right. I, I could smell all the weed that my downstairs neighbors were smoking. I didn't want to kill their buzz with all my, my stompy stompy. So. No, you get your wooden clogs on or whatever. You wait till 3 a.m. and that's when you start playing. Right, right. Well, I mean, it, it served them a little bit right for the one time where they decided to scrape all the paint uh, off the ceiling at 1 a.m. Oh, God. 
I don't think that's weed then. They're doing something else to be like thinking there's stuff on the walls. I need to scrape the walls down. No, the paint was falling off. I guess they just moved in. We didn't know new people moved in. It was like the brother of the person that lived there previously. And uh, I guess they constantly kept a dehumidifier running and a humidifier running at all times in that bedroom, which just causes all the paint to fall off every sure. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh so yeah, they decided to scrape that at 1 a.m. Uh <laughs> man, neighbors anyway. suck. It's like, what the hell is going on? Just across the board, neighbors always suck. Right, right. You never yeah, it's always I mean that's why it's usually better to be upstairs neighbors. I rarely had a problem being the upstairs neighbor. Right. Yeah. No, you know I what uh have movie. you been watching you those elephants? <laughs> have you been chipping away at your movie backlog? I know you mentioned like last week you were just watching a lot of movies uh i was just watching yeah i forget everything i've been watching i know i watched uh what's that matrix like movie with uh batman uh matrix like movie with batman is it called equilibrium i want to say that sounds vaguely familiar but i don't think i've watched that yeah i think that's it um now batman uh christian bale or different yeah batman? batman yeah it was equilibrium which is basically like the matrix but not um it's about okay. these people that take take pills so they have no emotions and then he stops taking his pills and he's got to fight the system and it's over the top and ridiculous and i will actually defend it this is a great <laughs> movie um, okay the one i was watching last night though that killed me was uh jesus what was it highlander well uh, i've never watched the original one i think i've started it this is my third time starting it um <laughs> Because I realized I've seen the intro at least twice because the intro is so lame that I quit out after the intro. Sure. Uh, and the rest of the movie is just about as bad. Uh, the story sucks. The acting sucks. Uh, and uh, the, the worst part is this is like an action-based movie. Uh, and I don't think they have a fight choreographer. They damn sure don't have actors or stunt doubles that can work with swords. So the, it's like they're coming at each other with their swords in slow motion almost because they really want to make sure they're not accidentally hurting each other. Uh, <laughs> and then it sounds like a piano noise when they do hit. I don't know if that's the actual noise that swords make and they just replace it in other movies. It's interesting. bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, it doesn't even cross over to so bad it's good. So that's... wow. Uh, now it has the main Ooh. dude. Uh, he's um, he's Raiden, right in uh, in the Mortal Kombat movie. And he's like a well known actor. Uh, like uh, that is him. Yeah. Holy shit! I forget his name, I but I thought he looked familiar. I think it, his accent is so fucking weird in the movie. He sounds like Tommy Wiseau in the room. <laughs> yeah. And so I thought wherever because I know people can, people don't know where Tommy is from. Um, right. Because they can't identify that. Uh, that accent so i figured wherever this guy's from that's got to be where tommy's from so, yeah, <laughs> wow okay although i do need to, i do need to your hbo uh login info so i can finally catch up on the watchman now's the time you i've been it. watching a lot of the time i've been watching uh uh daredevil um so it's time the show yeah which is fucking great Oh, absolutely yeah. great have you been watching any movies or tv shows i did last night i watched uh for the first time in a while the original predator oh fuck yeah yeah it's man you can't go wrong with predator it's such a good movie and like uh it still holds holds up you know like with the effects they do they really um sneakily or like sh slowly reveal the predator you know they don't uh, show too much which makes it even more scarier um the dialogue is very over the top but uh that's just kind of how it is and then it's crazy to like watch uh schwarzenegger again because he's so fucking jacked in this movie it's, it's like just at the highest capacity i think like he's like crazy jacked in this movie and uh, I just got to give props to him. Like he's man. He kind of created single handedly created that action genre. I'm trying to think of like before him, who was that guy synonymous with that kind of movie? I feel like he created that, that lane. So I, I was watching a thing on that and he basically did. Um, so there was I, beforehand, it was your 007s. Everyone was very suave, dressed well. He, when Conan came out, he was really the first, and they even told him like lots of studios told him, nobody wants somebody that jacked. Um, so yeah conan was the first his big break he had to work hard to get that break and once he had it like that's what everyone wanted so that's how you got your stallones um yep i was watching running man by the way that was another one i haven't Fucking seen that great 
You haven't seen it? <laughs> no. Stop Stop the podcast right now. <laughs> that one's aged better than just about everything I've watched this side of Con Air, because Con Air is fantastic. Oh, um, I saw you were watching that too, yeah. <laughs> dude, Con Air was the, like, that's the best one I've seen. It's... <laughs> I think I think they did that movie on purpose. It's it's so crazy. Um, well, yeah, I met with Con Air. They there's that iconic scene where the plane finally goes through. Is it like downtown, like a Los a Las Vegas rather? And they use miniatures, and that's why right. it looks so cool. And that scene still holds up because it's all miniatured stuff. That was with miniatures. Yeah, it looks fucking like you're, someone's pla- crashing a plane through right. downtown Las Vegas. <laughs> that's the thing. That's the power oh, of shit. miniatures and like practical effects. Is that that's what ends up holding up and you can still make it look like it's really happening and imagine now you can throw some cg around the corners and edges and it just makes it even more seamless yeah just like they did with star wars (laughs) did they (laughs) well they did that yeah they did the original remakes of star wars and they replaced all the puppets oh sure it looked like garbage but oh yeah 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 no no, that's not the way i totally agree like that's how uh you know you throw the cg in the sides and the corners and the backgrounds and that's why mad max fury road you don't, you can't even see the CG. It looks so good in that. Right. Um, so you just throw it in appropriately. Um, right. Yet. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you mentioned uh, yep. where they're talking about Arnold. Like, uh, yeah. I'm, I was thinking, rack my brain after the movie that it was such a chance for him to take movies like that because he kind of gravitated towards these like sci-fi roles, and it I feel like that yeah. could also quickly implode. You know, like, but he actually found these. It was such a great mix where he found these really cool movies, and then he's the best guy to fill them. And he creates this whole genre. It's, I mean, he, we need an Arnold Schwarzenegger day just for him. Well, it's interesting too, because like that was when he was still being typecast as the action hero, um, and that and, you know he was super excited about that. But it's interesting if you see interviews with him, how determined he was and driven to push himself out in different directions. So after he'd done all these action movies, he said, "No, I'm doing comedy. I would do <laughs> the comedy now." And he took he took whatever they'd throw at him. And he knocked it out of the park. And that was sort of the the thing. Like he's got that range from comedy to to action. And that's why when he has the rare action comedy, he's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, because then I went down the rabbit hole of watching the trailers of like uh is it twins or uh right. junior where he has a baby somehow. Like he really just went uh, not off the rails. Like he, there's these awesome just this path of him doing this comedy stuff and it works. Right. Junior was I for the longest time uh i describe it to people and no one knew what the fuck i was talking about so i <laughs> thought i dreamed junior <laughs> yeah no you didn't make sense because that seems like a a movie that could have existed in a dream yeah it's arnold schwarzenegger right. and he gets pregnant and that's the movie <laughs> that's it sent to me like that's all they did as far as the script goes <laughs> but uh, I, I was actually watching uh there's this youtube channel uh, that does these video essays I've become obsessed with. And he's talking about all these movies and really doing deep dives. And he does this deep dive on what makes Predator great. Um, and the thing he brings up is sort of the role of guns in that game or in that movie. And he's like, the the director is not pro, it sounds like wasn't pro gun or he was sort of trying to make a statement about him. And that was why the first basic half of the movie plays out is the classic this is what every action movie was like in that time. You had the the baddest of the bad. I think they even called themselves that in the movie. They break out their guns and they're just unloading on huge villages. Nothing can touch them, but they can shoot everyone else. And then the second the Predator shows up, they unload every single bullet they have into the forest, just destroy it. Nothing fucking doing. And it was supposed to make you just, as the viewer, who's the... the uh, you know, the main character is sort of your vehicle in this universe. You feel impotent. You feel terrified because right. if the fucking minigun into the forest won't do anything. The fuck are you going to do? Right. So it's really, it's really kind of cool on how that it shifts gears into a thriller was sort of the, it does for sure. Awesome. Because yeah, because the guns don't work. You can't see the thing in the first place and it's just brutally <laughs> taking out your team one by one. Like it's so fucking good. It makes yeah. me sort of want to try the the game. I know it's not at all the same experience, but like, there's there's got to be a way to crack that code. Maybe it's a I want a different experience completely from that whole like uh, three versus one or whatever they're doing with Predator Hunting Grounds. But it makes me sure. curious about it more. more. I, I mean, the game doesn't do it bad. It's definitely it's definitely more in the modern day. I think the thing you got to understand, though, is if you're going to play the Predator, you got to be great at the Predator. You can't just walk into this game like you can at Dead by Daylight. I think I've never played it. Uh, right. And just sort of, it seems like in Dead by Daylight, like most of these games, 
the the one person versus the rest generally has an advantage uh whereas this you're pretty well fucked and it's gotten more balanced but i think that is kind of cool it's hunting the humans was supposed to be a test and now it feels like a test but jesus what a test it is <laughs> yeah um yeah i mean I'm, I'm now more curious to play that game but i was just thinking about that while i was watching the movie like but yeah, that movie is just, it's one of my favorites. Of course, I as I go down the Arnold uh, rabbit hole, it's like, I got to watch T2 again because that's my favorite, maybe my favorite movie ever. It's like that and right. it's, a, it's it's hard, man. It's like top five, that, the original Matrix. I'm just such a sucker for that style of movie, but I love it. I, th- I think T T2, of all those, and I still, I mean, Matrix still holds up phenomenally, but I feel like the Matrix feels very fucking 90s. Uh, yeah, where... and I love it because of that. But yeah, <laughs> um, which I I can still totally turn myself, you know, transport myself back to being thirteen and watching it. But I think T uh, two is more timeless. Um, yeah, it really, even though it was set definitively in was that late eighties, early that was probably late eighties, right? Uh, first early one's 80s? late eighties, and then the the T two is like ninety three, ninety four ish. Right. Even though it's very cemented in there, it doesn't really matter. Like the only right. 90s thing about it is that phones weren't cell phones. Aside from yeah. that, everything is just universal. It translates. It's it's fucking great. And you really don't even have to see the first one to get the second one. No. So. Yeah, so I was just uh, doing that and then uh, looking in the mirror and flexing basically while I was watching those movies and realizing I'll never get to Arnold's uh, <laughs> thick thick status, but yeah. Dude, we got to work like my arms now that I'm I've gotten almost skinny again. My arms are super <laughs> fucking skinny. And I went to I tried to go to uh, both local uh, sporting goods stores. And uh, one uh, Dix is uh, they don't have any weights. And then I went to Big Five and uh, I'm like, hey, where are your weights? And he goes, well, this is the weight aisle. See how it is barren. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so That's funny. People- um people like panic bought the weights or something i think that's exactly what's going on i saw on uh it was like our local craziest ad or like facebook marketplace or whatever somebody was selling two dumbbells 10 pounds each for 30 bucks like that's astronomical as far as prices why would you pay that but i think it's because it's tough right now everyone's beefing up at home and we're going to come out of this quarantine just like just super jacked just just one arm jacked and the other <laughs> one just laying there like the- <laughs> i'm hoping they're balancing their bodies but who knows <laughs> Do another recreational activities, but yeah, yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. I'll, <laughs> I'll at least take that I've slimmed down, but yeah, I will need muscle now. Well, I'm looking into some. Uh, yeah, let's look at some of the new stuff. Oh, I'm looking into you know various you know products from across the border that can help us uh, beef up. So I'll let you know how that goes. I'll yeah, be the that, guinea pig. That bull semen. Gonna... <laughs> yeah, yep. I'm just getting all natural, just straight from the source, and uh, we'll see how that helps me out at all, or otherwise, you know, it's just fun time either way. But yeah. <laughs> so we got some uh, we got some news here, Gavin. Uh, we got some more combat eleven. This happened last week, and I forgot to mention it. So let's get into some of the details. I actually uh, more... watched this. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, let's keep this trailer, too. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11's new friendships are just what the game needed. This is Michael McWhorter of Polygon. If the grisly entrails shredding fatalities of Mortal Kombat 11 are just a little too much for you right now, the game's upcoming Aftermath expansion will bring back a fluffier, fan favorite finishing move, Friendships. A new trailer for Mortal Kombat 11's Friendships offers a new look at just how cheerful and silly things will get later this month. So there's this Aftermath DLC. This is part of that. Or it's free regardless, but also it's kind of being um, announced with the whole Aftermath DLC, too. But I have, uh, yeah, I'm going to queue up this trailer here. Um, I like to, it's, it's dope to see friend, friend, uh, is it friendship or friendlies? What's the name of it again? We're about um, to find out. Yeah. <laughs> so I have this thing going. But I doubt that's what it's called. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching this right, now. Okay, um, ready? Yeah, go, go for it. Oh, okay. Yep, go for it. Yeah, it seems to start with like traditional combat. Doing the whole, uh, is it Sub Zero versus, uh, what's his face? Scorpion. Yeah, Scorpion. And instead of the finish him. Yeah. <laughs> so I've never seen the bear show up first, but yeah. <laughs> and it's just no holds barred. Yeah, it's pretty dope. I love this because it's it's a great balance to how horrible the action is, like the how gory it is. So like, why not? Especially now lean into this. <laughs> what the fuck with Arnold? <laughs> yeah, on the bike. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yes. Got the pinatas and Raiden. Look, 
looks like everyone has their own. That's pretty awesome. Even Joker. <laughs> yeah, this is dope. The Liu Kang dancing. The free for all. Yep, yeah, it's it's part of the aftermath thing. May twenty six. It looks like Jax at the end, shredding on the, <laughs> shredding on the sex saxophone. Sex, <laughs> Damn. Oh my god. That's awesome. I mean, it's just really at the end of the day, like a fatality is just a way of stunting on someone, and this is just another fantastic way of stunting on someone. So <laughs> I appreciate it. That's awesome. I'd right. be curious to know is that gonna cost anything? So that part is free, but then there's also the aftermath DLC that comes with like a full blown extra single player stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah, so it comes with Fujin, Shiva, which is the female version of Goro with like the four hands. I always loved her. And then Robocop is somehow in the game too. <laughs> He's one of the DLC characters as part of that uh, expansion. But, I um, saw his yeah. gameplay. I really appreciate that he's super fucking stiff in his movements. That's good. It wouldn't feel like Robocop if they didn't do that. Right. So, and Do you think he fits this world very well? I mean... The Robocop movies were disgustingly gory. That's true. Um, I I would think that Dread would fit it and possibly more. Has he not um, been used yet? I don't think so. That's a shoe in. You're right. Like feel like he'd be he'd be great. Yeah, I'm trying to look right now and see if now that Evo is online only, uh, if it's in. Evo Online. Oh, right, because they kind of changed up the, the lineup, and I'm not sure if it is. This comes out May 26th, so I'm not sure when Evo is supposed to take place. Yeah. Did we talk about that at all? Uh, you Last know, I don't week? think we did. I don't think we did, yeah, that it was it was canceled, and there's a new lineup. Um, I don't have the new lineup uh, ready to go, but I can Google right. it quickly. They, right. They kicked out... Uh, you know, this is kind of funny, too, because uh, I think Street Fighter Five is still in it. And, uh, you know, they patched it because um, there was that fan mod to make the networking better. And then they patched it out. So it's funny that, you know, before Evo, they're going to patch out proper online play. Um, now, it looks like I have it. Dragon Ball Z Fighter Z, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, whatever the hell that is. Samurai Showdown, Soul Calibur 6. We got Street Fighter 5, Tekken 7, and then Under Night in Birth X Late. CLR? Yeah, CLR? Yeah, so, yeah, Under Night. Tech so, Eve Saturday Online. And... Okay, looks like it's oh. Aftermath is in there. I'm seeing Eve Online will also feature open tournaments from the following games where they were not previously part of 2020 official lineup. There's Killer Instinct, Mortal Kombat 11, Aftermath, Skullgirl, Second Encore, and, the, and Them's Fighting Herds is also added. Right, the newest, which is goofy as hell, but it has proper online. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11. Okay, so they do have Mortal Kombat 11. That's going to be awesome. Be really curious to see if uh, Sonic Fox goes back to the Mortal Kombat. Um, I think you know probably of Sonic Fox. Yeah, that's I follow him on Twitter. Start. Yeah, back when he was like a little fucking kid, that's what he got to start. <laughs> destroying adults. Right. At, uh, at, at Mortal Kombat. So hopefully he goes back to that. Be that being said, I think his favorite of all these games is Skullgirls. Uh, I know gotcha. he's super huge in DBZ, but he's talented enough that he can play all these games and it's no problem. He could probably play in every single league and be just fine. I don't... I think he does KI. Uh, KI is the one I'm most excited for, though. It's got really good net code. It's just an absolute blast. I think KI... I know you don't really watch these tournaments. I would highly recommend you watch KI. Um... Even if you don't play fighting games, you can watch and know exactly what's going on at every point in time. You'll just know because it's that clear. It's so badass. You got to watch it. Of, of now that's of Killer them, Instinct that's for the for the cool kids who don't know what's going on. It's Killer right. Instinct is what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, cool. Killer Instinct, yeah. Because I had to think for a second. It's like, oh, what's KI? <laughs> right. And all, all the characters are super... Like, they took... All, a lot of the characters from the old ones kind of looked like clones and they made them look very different from each other gave him a ton of personality the game's fucking nuts so and arms gotcha. apparently which is uh oh no they're saying never mind i read that wrong oh it's not included gotcha yeah that would have been an interesting choice but yeah there's no way 
There's absolutely, unfortunately, no way Smash could have done it. They have some terrible net code. When it's good, it's okay. When it's bad, it's fucking garbage. But this is all online, so they really have to rely on those games that you write that have a good, solid net code and the ability to play. You know, with a, at least the the lag not from the game. You know, adding to the stuff going on. Right, and I'd be curious to see like, are people from Japan gonna come over to the U.S. so they have better net code? Uh, or just less lag. I don't know if people mm. do that or not. Um, so it, it's really too bad. It's definitely, it's probably my favorite gaming event of the whole year. So it's sad to see it go. Um, but well, not counting like a E3 or something like that. But right. Um, yeah, it's cool that they have something. Um, yeah, some presence there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yes, yeah, so we got that going down. Some MK11 stuff. Now we have the next thing is uh, some more news, non news about Anthem. This is a uh, Bioware says Anthem redesign will be a longer process. So Richard Lawler of Engadget has the details. EA's Anthem launch is one of the biggest misfires in recent history. In February, Bioware boss Casey Hudson officially announced plans to reinvent it, its ex- experience. And today, a blog post explains a bit more about the team behind that effort. Bioware Austin Studio director Christian Delay Deli led development of several post-launch updates on the game and says he's been stalking player feedback online for notes on how to improve things. The good news is that a team of 30 or so people are already working on prototypes of changes and hopes to share those with fans during the development period, even if they're elements that might ultimately not ship. However, if you are hoping for a quick turnaround on new look on a new look anthem, he also said this is going to be a longer process. I was curious about this a couple days ago. I was wondering, when are we gonna see something from Anthem? Because they did say that they're gonna rework everything how much longer but it looks like it's going to be a long wait for something like this yeah it's uh it's it's kind of it's kind of too bad and they say like 30 people or so and people are kind of in disagreement whether that's enough people or not enough people mm. um it's hard to say I, I i hope they have enough artists i really don't know how many programmers you need on something like this uh but i've also never worked on anything that big uh mm. close. um but i i hope they have enough artists to work on it um it's gonna be interesting to see what this sort of realm reborn thing is that being said you look at you know look at uh what's it called the game with the planets and you go between them oh no man's uh, sky no man's sky right uh that team's not huge to my understanding i don't yeah, believe... I think they're a small team yeah so it could be done and they may be able to move a bit more agile because there's less people and there's less red tape i'd hope um but uh you just you just don't know um that being said at some point have you saw seen the rumors about uh dying light 2 uh you know what i don't have that pulled up but i did hear like issues with uh behind the scenes like it's it's been extended and they're thinking it's like a mess behind the scenes yeah yeah what have you heard i'll pull yeah, up an actual yeah, thing here just, like the gameplay design's changing all the time they have too many systems i mean it just reminds me of like a bioshock development cycle this is why it sounds like working with ken levine again where it's such a pain in the (laughs) ass we're drawing out the development on this it's going to be way different like who knows um but yeah sorry to distract from anthem i don't know how are how are you kind of feeling about all this i don't know if you ever played anthem i played like maybe you know i mean it's it's a joke but like five minutes worth of it but really you know like i don't know an hour or two um there's a lot of potential there It, it didn't catch me right off the bat but like i love the idea of these iron man suits you're flying around this you know futuristic or like alien world the yeah i I guess it was buggy and kind of just not unique enough for me to stay on it but um i'm like i really dig that ea is willing to you know keep working at this because they have a good potential series here but they really have to just i don't know how much it's going to take to like rework it completely and what that even looks like when they come out of this you know a year or two from now yeah it's gonna be it's interesting. Interesting. That's yes. uh I, I hope they can pull it out. Um you just you just don't know at this point. Right, right. Yeah. I'm I'm worried, but uh we'll see what happens. And then by then by two, you know, years from now possibly where we all will be kind of into uh beginnings of next gen. So what what does that change their plans, you know, with like right. SSD stuff, you know, but they still want to support current gen. That's where all the consoles are being sold. So it's like I wonder how that affects their their design yeah can you imagine if this game like i know that was part of the issue is they were trying to develop it on the uh frostbite engine but can you right. imagine like, looking at the the new unreal engine like how this game totally would have worked seamlessly and probably super easy built on that new unreal engine and would have looked like what it did in the demo uh 
right you know assuming they had enough artists to make that big a world which i'm not convinced they did uh um, yeah <laughs> yeah we'll see we're still still the very beginnings of it but uh, at least they're being vocal about the fact that they're you know they're tackling it yeah yeah it's good awesome so this uh next story Man, this you know lit a fire into my ass. I actually started skating again this week for the first time in a while. Is a Tony Hawk Pro Skater one and two as a remaster that they announced. Um, the first segue is just some info about microtransactions, but we'll talk about the actual news story here. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater one and two won't have microtransactions at launch. This is Jordan Alleman of IGN.com. The Tony Hawk's Pro Skater one and two remasters won't feature microtransactions at launch, but they could arrive later down the line if fans demand more content. Speaking of GameSpot, Vicarious Visions boss Jen O'Neill told the outlet, everything that you see at launch is going to be unlocked with gameplay. We're not planning on having monetization at launch. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is a bundle pack offering re re remasters of the original games from the late 90s. The game was revealed last week and it will land on PS4, Xbox, PC on September 4th, 2020. Uh, in other news, uh, the uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 uh, soundtrack was released as well. And it's all pretty much like 90% of the songs from the original 1 and 2 uh, Tony Hawk's uh, games. We have a police truck from Dead Kennedy, Superman, which is like they, they need that for sure from Goldfinger. You got um, You from Bad Religion, Gorillaz Radio from Rage Against the Machine. Uh, yeah, so Power Man 5000, you got that song in there. Uh, how do you feel about Have you watched the trailer? How do you feel about them bringing this back to life? I mean, it, as long as they pull it off, I'm super excited. I'd love to... Uh, I don't know how far they're going to remake in. I, To me, like the Underground games, that's where it was at. That I mean, I love these games. I really did. But my favorites of all time were definitely the Underground series. Gotcha. Um, but it's it's just awesome yeah to, to for them to bring it back and i hope i really hope it's good um, yeah that the one of the I first could... the first two questions i had when i heard of this and they finally launched a trailer was okay who's making it and are the songs in there because those are the two like they have to be on point and with vicarious vision so they did the spyro remaster recently they did the crash bandicoot remaster recently they did uh the nitro crash bandicoot racer they did that remaster again so like they have the pedigree to handle this so I'm, i feel at ease that they're doing that and i think that they're going to supply something that's on par and they have to nail it they can't like especially with thps 5 being such a shit show like they have to nail this i think the thing that that kind of worried me going or that i didn't know how to feel going into it with the music is uh i kind of for me the tony hawk games every single one had such a phenomenal soundtrack it was almost like the the vans warp tour cds where it was a big mix and it would introduce you into all these bands and songs you hadn't heard before. So I was kind of expecting with this one that they'd have a bunch of songs uh, that were brand new and were kind of doing the same thing. Um, so uh, I was kind of hoping for that. But that being said, it you know that that soundtrack is absolutely uh, timeless. Uh, there is a small list of songs missing. Uh, oh, there is. Yeah, the song whose artist showed up the art but are not on the playlist no uh here are the songs missing from the playlist and the art so what we think they're missing uh is psycho vision which i remember i didn't actually like that song on there uh committed by unsane out with the old by ally life b-boy document 99 uh and bring the noise by anthrax and public enemy oh that one's a dope that's a banger I, um that sucks that that's not there right um i feel like overall they got most of the songs as much as you can because that's a nightmare imagine doing the licensing with stuff like that so i'm i yeah. i'm applaud that they even got the songs they got so that's that's really dope right and they have uh worlds collide by power man 5000 so that's the main sign me up yep <laughs> i think i used to listen to that one on loop uh and i played <laughs> on the n64 version where they just had the music and wow. no lyrics. so i remember when i found out that song had lyrics it blew my mind. Yikes! Um, you're listening. To, you're playing on 64 with no lyrics, just the music. Are you were you a Mormon or something? Like what the hell is going on? Right. That's not a That's good just setup. The way the 64 one was. I remember Damn. Superman. Uh, I think Superman is one of the few ska songs that uh, I don't absolutely hate. Same here. Um, and I think I may only not hate it because of this game. I think if I'd heard it outside of this game, <laughs> I'd be annoyed as hell. But it's just going to take me back to being a little kid. 
Right, the nostalgia is super strong with a lot of these songs, and that's what does a lot of the trick is that you remember playing the game. And you mentioned something earlier, which is sounds just like it's it's such a dated reference now, but like the idea of mentioning a band's warp tour CDs, like that just that sense right. alone is such a time capsule. Like the none of those things are around anymore, basically. Man, those were so cool. And it's nice that Vans Warp Tour is still a thing, I think. I want to say they don't well, I mean they can't do events now, but like they they finally stopped them what, like 2 years ago, a year ago? Like it was a big deal when they kind of Yeah, they did the last uh, uh sanctioned tours. You know, I was I was mad the last one uh my buddy Joe went to in Chicago. Uh I guess uh Alexis on Fire played. They came they got nice. back together and played it and I fucking missed it. Yeah, they actually put out a, an album recently. They got back together and they were doing tours. Now they can't tour oh, right shit. now, but yeah. Holy oh, shit. I didn't know mm-hmm. that. I know it was very under the radar. Like I, I didn't realize that either, but yeah, they're back together. That's awesome. I'm going <laughs> to yep. have to look that up. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm, I'm super stoked for this. Uh, that's one of my favorite games ever is those first two. Uh, you did uh, mention a good point. The fact that like the first games introduced a lot of people to different you know uh, genres and different uh, bands and stuff, they kind of could have done something like that with this, this uh, bringing it back to life, also bringing a new soundtrack. But I guess if it's a remaster, you got to have those original songs. Maybe when they do the next entry, assuming this sells well, then that's when they actually do like a, a updated, you know, uh, list of artists and genres. And I don't think I want to listen to that, but uh, I guess that's that that'd be fair to do that. It'd be it'd be interesting trying to curate a new. It'd be nice if they did both for this, but it'd be interesting curating, you know, a, a new soundtrack for that because this old. I mean, these were that kind of songs for this culture. I don't know what. Is it what do they what do the skaters listen to nowadays? I don't know. Is I it, think they're flossing. I think they're dabbing, but that's about it. I don't know what they're actually. I'm not. I don't have the, uh, you know, my finger on the pulse when it comes to that stuff. Right. I figure it's more maybe, probably gone a little bit more towards rap. Um, I would guess. Yeah. I I basing this off of pure guessing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would don't. say that's fair. And there's I'm sure there's still some punk rock stuff there as well, like whatever new genre. But it's like. It's it's tough, but I think you could still do a, a a good job of like bringing people into the best, you know, what what that what those genres have to offer, you know, paired with the gameplay. But yeah. I'm I'm hopeful that now we're in a good time where like that's possible. Like, bef- you know, a year ago, months ago, we thought that this couldn't happen, and now it's it's possible. Right, right. So hopefully, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I can't wait. I tell you what, I can't wait, Gavin. Yes, and that's September fourth. Uh, the underground games while they're at it. Uh course i don't know if like bam margera and the likes of them would want to come back for two and uh, just one just underground one you can do just underground one we don't yeah. necessarily need to no i say you just do one and um but now you know everything's possible where you could remaster the third you could do the fourth maybe do those standalone ones because they're kind of uh beefy games at that point there's so many different features and you know locked into each game so maybe you do those single on their own and then you do uh, underground on its own too like that could be really awesome yeah yeah absolutely Nice. Let's go into our next uh, article here. We got Respawn marks its 10-year anniversary with a new Vancouver studio. So Rebecca Valentine of Games Industry and GamesIndustry.biz has the details. When Apex Legends launched in February of last year, Respawn Entertainment had laid the groundwork for its momentum through deals with content creators and its plan for a sudden surprise release. But speaking of GamesIndustry.biz, Respawn COO Dusty Welch says the game's sudden popularity took the studio by surprise, reaching over 1 million players in its first eight hours, 10 million in, in three days, 25 million in a week, and 50 million in its first month. It's popular enough that Respawn is opening a new studio in Vancouver just to focus on its continued development. This will be Respawn's second location alongside its existing studio in California and will be led by a team including Head of Operations Henry Lee, Team Director Steven Fer- Ferreria. They, all, they, along with the Apex Legends game director Chad Grenier, will join Welch. Some of the philosophy behind opening a studio, a second studio primarily for Apex Legends was to alleviate some of the struggles of the California team, giving it room to breathe and more total personnel more total personnel to focus on the game. It's a move that seems to attract with past comments by Respawn CEO Vince Zampella about Apex Legends being updated less frequently to ensure its developers weren't overworking. Also in the news with that is uh, there's no new Titanfall games in the works. This is from also an interview with uh, Vince uh, Zampella, uh, CEO CEO of uh, Respawn, mentioning there's nothing in the works. Uh, There's a quote here. You see the little bits of stuff coming back through the lore in Apex Legends, he added. At some point, I would personally like to see some kind of resurrection here. We'll see if we can make that happen, um, but there's nothing in the works. 
Um, but yeah, Gavin, how do you feel about the new studio and Respawn just focusing on Apex, you know, on the side? Yeah, it almost sounds like the new studio isn't, you know, just solely working on Apex so they can work on a new game. It almost sounds like they're just both going to work on Apex, which, yeah, that should helpfully um, get updates more quickly. Um, but, um, you know, that's kind of, again, too bad Ape, uh, the Respawn is a super talented studio. I'd love to see them make more original IPs um, or, yep. you know, do something else in that universe or work on a new Titanfall 2 um but and they have uh so they've done um that jedi game you know they have jedi fallen order so that's also under their umbrella so maybe they can now i would you'd have to imagine that game sold so well that they'll they're working on the uh, beginnings of a sequel to that so now they can focus on that but apparently what they've sacrificed is titanfall 2 because now that with those two things with uh, apex and a uh, potential sequel to jedi it's like i guess maybe there's no more room for something else yeah yeah it's uh well yeah hopefully more good stuff come i mean very very talented developers i do wonder if the guys that left uh to start their own studio still would have left right. um having known this they this is probably a long time coming so they probably knew it was coming and they still wanted to go off and do their own thing i'm still really going to be interested to see wasn't that wasn't that the game that was like the Weird West or whatever? Is that the dev or am I thinking of... Maybe I'm thinking of the people that left Obsidian. Either way, yeah, uh, I'm still uh, really curious to see what's going to come of this and the people that left. Um, just all the best for these people. Talented, yep, yeah, the, people. the studio you mentioned, um, it's like a Dark Void or, or a Black Hole, something like that, that's Gravity Well. Um, so that's a new offshoot. That's a new studio that's from those ex-Apex uh, devs. Maybe that's where we see some kind of lifeblood for Titanfall go. Maybe they see the void and they create something like that, but um, nothing from Respawn in the moment. But yeah, you're right. And with everyone branching off, there's now more potential to see, you know, something like that uh, because they've built such a huge team with, you know, these really expert devs. And so like then then them branching off, we can see possibly more stuff out of them. Yeah, hopefully so. Yep, we'll see. Um, have you? When's the last time you played Apex? Been a little while. Probably, probably close to a year at this point. Mm. It's been a, been a hot minute. I don't know how much better they are in cheaters. I I would fully be willing to give it a shot again if I could get together a solid crew and play it. Um, because I I mean when I when it first came out in my mind it was the funnest thing since Halo. That's yeah. how how much fun I had playing with it. It was just a joy to bop around and shoot people. Even if you lost, you weren't that mad. Um, unless the other person was cheating. And then <laughs> after a point, everyone was cheating. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, fin us finishing or like me finishing a Titanfall 2's campaign recently, it does make me think like, maybe I do want to play some more respawn because the, the mechanics are there. Like the, the movement, that kind of style of gameplay is there. So like maybe I would have more fun there, but I just, traditionally don't have fun in these and that style of you know multiplayer game but the fact that i love the campaign so much sorry. What, what's this fortnite has several questions for you <laughs> that's true for some reason but i've played apex i've tried it like i'll dabble every couple of months and it doesn't hold on to me for some reason i maybe because there's so much going on i'm such a noob when i jump in it goes over my head and i just quit but uh you're right i mean I, there's so much going on in fortnite too but i still stay on to that so not sure and it's got a pretty, it's got a, I would say, even better organized inventory than Fortnite. So it really doesn't take long to pick everything up and get going. Uh, but yeah. Also, gotcha. I totally forgot to start recording my audio. So you're stuck with Discord. On <laughs> That's fine. You know what? You sound pretty good. Yeah. I think uh, Discord's been uh, pretty dope lately. I got my wired connection. So we should be fine. Sweet. Now, Gavin, our next story here is a Ghost of Tsushima gameplay open world details revealed. This is Jonathan Dorbush of IGN. Sony and Sucker Punch have finally revealed more about Ghost of Tsushima, the upcoming PS4 exclusive, which tells the story of Jin Sakai, voiced by actor Daisuke Tsuji, during the first Mongol invasion. Thanks to a new Tsushima-focused uh, state of play, we now know a lot about the next game from the infamous and Sly Cooper developers. There's a link to the gameplay there. Uh, using the so I don't know if you've watched the the trailer or the the gameplay at all because it's like a lengthy like 18 minute gameplay. Yeah, I, I mean, I was at work when it came out. I could only really watch so much, and um, or I could only pay so much attention when it was running. So yeah, 
uh, I watched it when it was happening. I think I was at home. It's it's crazy dope, man. Like the it's such a beautiful world. It's kind of amazing how beautiful this game looks. They go into depths on the gameplay with uh, you having the ability to play like as a as a like a sneaky version of uh, this character or like a buffed up samurai where you just go at everyone head on. Um, the the actual combat looks really dope. Uh, it's such a stylized world too with this like feudal Japan setting. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Like watching the trailer, I was actually having these crazy thoughts. Where it's like maybe I'm anticipating this more than Last of Us Two. So if I'm thinking of like ranking these like first party PlayStation games, this mm-hmm. this one is like because it's so new and such a different experience. Man, I'm super stoked for it. Uh, but yeah, I can't wait. This is uh, what a month after Last of Us Two. I think it's July on this one. We still really don't know that much on it that's true they did show a lot of the gameplay but they kept a lot of the story stuff behind the scenes um there's still mechanics you don't know about but one thing they're really toting is like the open world aspect of it whatever you see you can go to very much like zelda a lot of zelda vibes where there's not just like these markers everywhere it's just you see something visually that catches your eye and that's where you're supposed to go like that's how you find things in the air that's how you find or navigate the world is you look at the actual environment and that's how you know where to go um there's no like quest markers apparently um it's really really uh, fucking amazing I'm, I'm very impressed by it right which which could be interesting with this game if it turns out to be basically breath of the wild but prettier and uh has tighter combat then it could just be you could do gangbusters this could be the new big thing i'm pretty sure this studio is probably set up to develop this faster than nintendo so they could be pumping these out even faster um this has potential to be the next big um franchise so. i agree yeah watching the gameplay i'm thinking yep they have a franchise on their hands because i mean it's whatever everything they're showing is just like a fully fleshed out world gameplay i mean they're and then they're experts you know sucker punch they're well known for their games so i trust them to like nail this when it actually comes out and i think they've waited so long to show uh, what they're doing be, uh, like the actual details because they're kind of waiting to get everything in line but i trust that they're going to actually nail this when they release um i can't wait man great yeah and if they do they do give you the option and just go in sword swinging uh that's definitely right. the way i'm playing yeah oh yeah it's very much like, like go for go it ahead. Okay, it's very much like uh, when they show the gameplay, it's like you're, you're Batman. You can sneak around, you can jump in, use some tools, or you can go at it more of like Assassin's Creed style or like a For Honor style where it's one-on-one or one-on-four. Um, yeah, it's really intense. Nice. Cool. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. But that is uh, very soon, actually. This summer, end of the summer is looking pretty loaded for some of these uh, big uh, big titles. Oh, you brought, up a, you brought up a game here I wanted to bring up. Uh yeah, so Man Eater. I I need to see this trailer, but uh, I think Destructoid described this as the uh, the gaming junk food we need right now. Uh, so <laughs> nice. Whatever you do. Okay, so I'm going to hit play now. Okay. And we're yeah, watching this Man Eater. It's like a gameplay story trailer or something like that. And uh, I'm not sure. Do you do you control the the shark? Is that the whole thing? Yeah, so it almost looks like you're running around like eating people like Tony Hawk style, like building up combos and stuff from <laughs> okay. what I've seen. Uh, so yeah, trying to defeat or eat all the people. I'm already on board. Games. Yeah, big cool looking levels. Uh, the thing that's got me very excited is Tripwire doesn't make bad games. Tripwire... Hmm. Every single game is has been awesome, and they also have some. Oh my god, that's ridiculous! They also <laughs> have the best game feel out there. Um, I mean, what what's it? Uh, anyway, they. I'm not yeah, familiar made, with what they've made before, but I'm just drawn blank. They made this. Uh, they made this one. Uh, right, something rising sun or rising tide. I forget what it's called. Oh, okay. Um, the game that that for me that really. Whatever. Let me just look them up here. Tripwire yeah. Interactive. Yeah, the gameplay looks nuts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm already on board. Like, as you mentioned, like, it's like your Tony Hawk, you know, with a shark. Yep. Sign me up. That's all I need to hear. Say no more, fam. And I'm on board. Right. So, a couple of days, hopefully. I am going to wait for the reviews on that one. Uh, but that being said, 20 That's bucks fair. isn't that bad. 
Right. Uh, okay, so the game they started off with Red Orchestra, which is very much more kind of simulated. Um, uh, and then they did Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. Um, but for me, the game that they made that's so amazing is Killing Floor and Killing Floor 2. Oh, uh, nice. Killing Floor 2 is... I mean, both of those games have the best game feel of any games like ever. And... Yeah, they're absolutely amazing. So I fully trust that this game is going to feel great no matter what. That's awesome. Yeah, Killing Floor is a well-known um, series of games. I always, I haven't played them, but I like I'll watch trailers, and it's just like visually stunning. The gunplay looks really tight. Um, so I imagine, yeah, they're going to transfer that sense of movement to this as as you're a shark, you know, hitting back bombs or whatever that happened in the trailer, like to, and then right. just like eating people. Yeah, this looks awesome. Dude, when you get your PC built. You're gonna, yep. we're gonna get some killing floor. And here's the thing people still play that fucking game. So we're gonna be able to find a room and play it, even though you'll be like level zero. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't realize it's that. multiplayer. I know I've, I've seen like the campaign stuff, but I didn't realize there's a multiplayer aspect to it. I think you're thinking of something else. Oh, okay. Is it primarily multiplayer then? Killing floor, uh, to my understanding, is the game that inspired Left 4 Dead. Uh, to my understanding. So it's, gotcha. it, multiplayer uh it's four players i think four, maybe it's six players versus it was a horde mode style game of you versus the zeds which are not quite zombies they're like the science experiment uh gone wrong and a lot of them have like giant blades uh you know attached to their arms and they're just yeah. coming at you in huge waves and it's just fucking awesome uh so once you get your pc we're uh we're gonna play some killing floor bud it's, uh, <laughs> Probably one of the funnest horde modes out there. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah. I guess I, I assumed you were just playing this alone, but yeah, you're right. I'm looking at gameplay, and it's it's almost like a Left 4 Dead style. That's really cool. Yeah. That being speaking of, uh, there's another game sort of in that vein that I might have to buy. Uh, Deep Rock Galactic is finally out of early access. It looks fucking awesome. I've been watching lots of streams of it. I'm probably gonna buy it. It doesn't look that demanding to run. Uh, it's just this this low poly, uh, awesome looking game, sort of in the vein, uh, maybe a bit of a Left 4 Dead or more of a Vermintide, but really it's sort of its own thing. It's about that mining, uh, trying to get in and get those minerals and get back out, but you definitely don't have enough ammo to take on all these bugs, so you need to get out before the shit hits the van too hard. It just it just looks like a blast. And Interesting. It looks I haven't really heard cool. of this. The destructibility is awesome. There's some of the bugs can actually you know cover up the holes and stuff and block your paths it just it's super neat and people are really digging it i think it helps the fact um that with all these games that really do well is just make them fucking hard and people are really going to be into it And this game from what i hear is very hard your decisions really matter you have very limited supplies so it's just, it's a cool looking game and it's finally out so you're mining it looks like you're like uh, traversing deeper and deeper into like a cave system um and it looks like you have like robot buddies and then you're fighting uh enemies at the same time yeah yeah gotcha yeah it looks up i'm seeing the guy like mine for gold and whatnot um yeah it looks really cool never heard of this oh you haven't that was no. uh that was also one of the cool ones little indies that was announced back at uh 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 what's the at a game like, awards and I remember oh, seeing gotcha. it, like, oh, this is like Minecraft, but with guns. But it's, <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> gotcha, but it does gotcha. have really cool destructibility. That's what it looks like. Yeah. I will, once I get my PC, another game I can add to the list and games. Hopefully, I'll actually play this one and not just, you know, throw it on the stack of other stuff. <laughs> right, right. Nice, Gavin. Well, I wanted to end basically on this one. Uh, you had some thoughts about the Unreal Engine 5 demo. So the PS5 Unreal Engine 5 demo was shown off last week. It was part of the Jeff Keighley like, Summer Games announcement stuff. Um, so before getting to the details, some of the things that they boast that they can do with this new engine are stuff like, uh, so I have some of the quotes here, uh, using movie quality assets that consist of hundreds of millions of polygons for environment and character models, a new dynamic GI solution called Lumen, no LODs or pop-ins, uh, it's apparently out and and like full force 2021 um but uh, what were some of your thoughts on the engine it looks beautiful at face value but like uh do you think under the hood maybe there's something else going on it's really hard to say um 
because trying to find any information on this tech was really hard. Uh, Lumen, to be fair, they've been working on since I was in college. They've been showing demos for it, and I think it's just finally they're finally able to have enough processing power to get it. I, I have a feeling they could probably make Lumen work, I'm guessing, this gen. Because uh, to my understanding, uh, uh, the Hunt uses a extremely similar system, and that's part of the reason why the Hunt looks very good. That's Crytek's oh, okay. version, um, which Crytek is saying with this this new lighting engines that these uh, this technology like the uh, graphics cards have, they can increase that even further. Um, but yeah, so that had it, and this this has that now, and it, it's going to look gorgeous and it's doable. Um, the uh, for me, a lot of the big things are they have these additional um, networking stuff that could uh, make stuff so much easier. You'll get matchmaking, you'll get stuff. It sounds like hosted, like all these really cool features that normally it take a team of devs to work on. Um, now they've gone from I think taking money after you reach five thousand dollars or something like that. Now they push that up to a million, which is really right. huge. Um, so it's really neat. But yeah, that that big one is um nanite uh trying to figure out what the fuck that means and it's really hard to find any data i was able to find a somewhat thorough breakdown on digital foundry but even then i'm not sure they if they had their facts right it seems like they were kind of comparing it to um you know you can look at baked normals onto a model um which is where now explain take... bake to me as well so is that just like already established effects it's not like real-time rendering does that make any sense how i explained it in some cases with a lot of times with lighting that's how it's done so they'll take um rather than doing the bounces in real time which traditionally are not possible um they'll take the room they'll they'll do all the bounces from a few static lights that are never going to move and they'll bake that in uh to the level um so it'll always look really good but um when you add other lights to it it won't look as good as those ones will. And that's not too terribly expensive. Um, I mean, people have been using that one for years and years and years. Um, the then, but what, what I mean in this case is, so you have your models um, and how they do it is, so they mentioned ZBrush, right? ZBrush is you're basically just uh, carving out of clay something, but that's okay. going to be super duper high poly. So you bring it in, uh, to a different editor and you make a lower poly model version of it and then you can bake uh, between the two models you would bake a uh, normal map uh, that would sort of bridge the gap between so you'd have lower poly but using these normal maps and you you probably have some idea how that works uh, it would make the 3d look like it has more polygons on it uh, but if okay. you look you know at certain angles you can see that yes in fact that's flat it just lights it changes the way it lights um which is which is cool but it is time consuming um so that's one way of doing it and that's basically the standard way of doing it uh yeah. the other way is tessellation uh which is a lot more intensive uh we finally got to the point where it's not as bad tessellation a great example is the amazing looking mud in red dead redemption um, Gotcha. They they actually use that in a few other places you can see it uh the tessellation in uh, Battlefield Five. So as you get, you see the lot in the environment. As you get closer, uh, the environment goes from somewhat three D, um, but it has these extrusion maps. Uh, there's a better like height maps, I think is the term. So it's a height map, basically on top of another height map. So it extrudes more. You see these cool looking rocks, um, but that does have an issue where it sort of bubbles up as you get closer. So okay. I'm told kind of what they're doing here is some sort of weird. It's more like the hype maps, but it's better, and I don't fully understand. So it sounds like there may be some form of baking, but they didn't make it clear. But the thing is, is you don't have to go in and adjust the model yourself, which I don't necessarily know how much of that believe. It's very confusing. They said you're going to be loading in 4K textures to do this shit. Um, so that's going to have its own issues. Yeah. Um, and that's why you're probably not going to be able to run it on current gen systems or what's now the current gen uh, which is going to cause issues too with um you know smart updates where you have the or whatever that's called smart delivery uh, yeah. smart delivery right so where you have your one version that's on one disc and it plays on both you're still going to be having modelers 
doing both versions for a while. I really don't know how realistic it's going to be. We're going to have to see um, some things I've seen. They don't know if you can do this on an animated model. It may be environments only. Mm. Um, so we just don't really know the limits. But it is super pretty. I was very right. impressed. Uh, my computer definitely can't run it. Um, <laughs> and that's going to be the other thing. Do we need a solid state drive plugged in right next to your graphics card and your CPU? Are we going to have to change the way motherboards work on PC? Was this a terrible time for you to build a PC? Because it's about to be obsolete. <laughs> God um, damn it. It's entirely possible if this becomes the new standard. So I, it's, yeah. It's so that, that reminds me of... There's a uh, quote from Tim, Tim Sweeney, CEO of, uh, of Epic. He's, he's working with, uh, I guess they're working really closely with Sony with their whole like super fast SSDs. They're thinking that like that's the, the, the future. They're, they're really hopeful with what they can do with those super fast uh, um, solid state drives. So yeah, you're, I think you touch on something where, are we going into a future where these systems are really linked, where they, you get, they have to be together to get this kind of graphical performance? Right. And it could be. And the nice thing is, is if that is then the standard, that's going to help out a lot of people in the industry, um, people working in art, especially people working in movie editing um, who kind of need this. Really, They they have these special, um, a lot of times they'll use these solid state drives that plug directly into a graphics card slot and can access stuff that much faster. Wow. Um, so really, it's going to help out a lot of people in the industry by making this super powerful stuff standard. Um, it, it could make a lot of PCs feel obsolete as far as gaming very quickly. That was one thing I saw because of the SSD that allows for them to stream these super high quality textures into uh, these systems um, better. Um, but yeah, that being said, some of the claims are still confusing. Uh, when it says no LODs or pop-ins, we need to right. see more to know that that's been proved. It sounds like LODs are now done automatically uh in which case that's not no lod's um it sounds like there may still be a pop in but they think they've disguised it properly well have they um it kind of comes gotcha. down to uh users so we're not really going to know until we see it um uh, and again all those leds and pop in that's still going to need they're still going to need that for ios they're going to need that for android uh current gen a lot of times they're going to need it so and until I'm proven other wrong or otherwise, in which case I'd love to be, I would love to be wrong. I don't right. think I'm, um, but if they, they have it that way and you can do the super high res stuff, um, then shit's going to start looking like movies and that lighting's <laughs> already going to help dramatically with making stuff look like movies. Cause that lighting was amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the demo, so. how they're adjusting the lighting to in real time seemed really cool. Um, one thing I found yeah. interesting, and they've gotten some heat online yeah, as much as, you know, I, I don't know how much pay, attention to pay to it, but there is a scene where the character is shimming through a corridor, and that's traditionally used to, like, help you load stuff on the other side of that that uh, the mm -hmm. animation, but they're claiming that, that was just kind of like a, a directional choice. They decided for the character to do that and not for that being a way to, like, load other stuff because that's the whole thing. They're promising, like, very small load times with this kind of tech. You know, you don't have to do these traditional... The routes of like hiding the rest of the level so but they i noticed they got some heat online for for that demo what happens in the demo anyways i think it's weird that they're going to complain about that but then they'd show that part where she jumps down like the entire city as it's crumbling like that's crazy hard to have that all loaded in memory so i don't think they use that to disguise i'm sure it was loading i'm sure this whole thing was streaming uh yeah. into the computer um but that being said, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I think I think they were probably using that to show get the rocks really close to the camera and show how good it looks when everything's right. close. Um, but yeah, if that being said, because they went into that room and they had all those models and then they were in there for a while. So that could, in theory, be a load time. So if this thing, if we're having to load a ton of shit every five seconds, that could be an issue. But again, we have solid state drives, So a lot of times. Right. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you touch on some good points where this is just kind of the initial announcements, but the details aren't really there yet. And I guess we'll have to wait in the upcoming months for them to actually reveal some of the stuff or show other tech using it, other games using it. But I know one thing in their release was that this isn't going to be something until at least 2021. So I imagine people are using it now, but as far as like when it's mainstream release, it's not for a little while now. So we have some time to actually, you know, 
before we get to see like a game running on UE5. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But like I said, my biggest thing is it sounds like they're empowering big studios they're empowering indies. You know, you want to make something in Mudbox or ZBrush and throw it in there. Look at these split. You can do that now or eventually um, you want to get your game up and working multi it, uh, unreal. I already have one of the easiest engines to make a networked game. And now they've made it way easier uh, to make it full and proper. Um, you add that with a cross play. So, you know, you're going to be able to build a game very quickly with matchmaking between all these different systems and it works super quick and really well. Uh, that's a huge deal. There are so many indies out there that grew up on multiplayer games only that want to make these but don't have the know-how and now they can do it way cheaper. Um, it's going to speed up our pipeline, which is one of the biggest bottlenecks in gaming. Um, so it's 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 really getting rid of a lot of bottlenecks and the fact that they moved uh, where they get their cut further out uh, is just another reason to do it. So we'll see. It, it seems like they're just removing bottlenecks. I'd love to see uh, where they go next with all this. So I am a fan. I'm super cautious about a yeah. lot of this tech, but I'm a I'm a fan of what we've seen. Gotcha. Now, what's another good like comparative a uh, comparative comparison like for another tech, another engine that would be like neck and neck with Unreal as far as like competition going forward? You know, what's one that I'm just not you know hearing enough about? We always hear about Unreal, but what's another that's on their level? that could see this and now compete and show something else features that unreal won't have so there's not um and there's never i mean the closest thing for a long time there was never uh, unreal was kind of the engine if you weren't going to make your own in-house and that and to be fair gotcha. tons and tons of game companies have been making their own in-house stuff square enix definitely has one ea has their one even though a lot of people don't like using it but they were trying to make their own unreal in that sense and definitely the cry engine was supposed to kind of be its own unreal so people have tried to make this for years but they had such a big head start um and everyone's dealing with the crappy years at this point unreal uh had a huge stretch of time where it was a garbage engine and people didn't like working it was an engine to make unreal games and that was it um and then you could bootstrap it to make your game and then eventually it became this really flushed out thing the closest competition it's really at is unity with some of Unity's last couple of updates, it's really closed the gap. It's closed the gap in terms of graphics, in terms of it has this different programming way that I really don't understand that allows you to have way more shit on screen. Um, mm. So Unity has been doing a lot of catching up. People really like working in it. It has a lot of Unityisms, but I'm sure that Unreal has a lot of Unrealisms. Uh, but it's Unreal is now, especially with the way you can do this visual programming language, um, and if you really need to do shit fast, you can do it in C++. Um, so I think Unreal is now quicker to pick up. Um, yeah, it's it's always kind of led the industry, and gotcha. it just got a huge, huge advantage. Now, can Unity catch up some of this ground? Can they do that whole Nanite thing? Probably eventually. Um, mm. That's the thing about the game industry is we always share this technology, right? Uh, that's the thing at these GDCs, people go out and explain we're really, as an industry, we're very good about sharing stuff and not hoarding our secrets. And I think that's a really cool thing that we do that a lot of other industries don't do. So I'll be curious to see how much of this they reveal and tell other people. Um, that being said, I think Lumen, people have been bouncing around with that kind of idea forever. So everyone kind of knows how that works already. Um, they just finally got it running real time. So, but Nanai, it'll be an interesting one if it's actually plausible. I think you will probably be able to catch up fairly quickly, but yeah, Unreal is just kind of in its own league. Gotcha. Nice, Kevin. Well, we'll end it here today on the just a little bit of this uh, GTA, um, not remastered, the GTA mod where uh, it looks almost photorealistic. I don't know if you have that that video. It's in the dock there, but uh, I kind of jumped around on it, but some of the footage is insane if you want to pull it up. So the, the name of the mod is Natural Vision Evolved. And it's something that's been tweaked for the past couple of years now, but this is like the latest version of it, and it looks pretty bonkers. It's like a yeah, like a overall to everything as far as the lighting goes, uh, the textures and reflections. It's pretty nuts. Right. See, yeah, the reflections look. Yeah, looking really good. I'd be I'd be kind of curious to see like there's so much stuff it does right. I can't quite fully grasp of what's kind of giving the uncanny valley on a lot of this i'd love 
to know. Yeah, what? Uh... Yeah, the lighting looks amazing, uh, but you're right. It does. It has its own. Maybe they, it's there purposely, but like giving you some leeway by having that uncanny valley or having this like character to it. It doesn't have to be as photorealistic. Maybe you you give it more of a of a benefit of a doubt because it's more like it still looks like a GTA kind of style game. If that makes any sense, but yeah, it still looks very real. But yeah, there's also that little bit that pulls you out of it. Yeah. But like the real world lighting going, I'm seeing some crazy textures. I they kind of touch on some of the reflections in the puddles for a second in here, and then the the building lighting as well is pretty nuts. Right. Yeah, the buildings look super duper good. Uh, the vehicles, the puddles. Ooh, parallax map textures. Really, I know what that is mapping. I would think I would think it'd be better like what we were talking about. I would think it'd be better to do uh tessellation. I think if you're doing all this crazy shit, you might as well just tessellate it uh over parallax mapping. Um uh, but that's my opinion. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I can't really wait to know people are doing parallax mapping anymore. Mm. Is it kind of a, a just a, an older uh technique? Uh, to my understanding, uh, the amount of horsepower it takes to run it uh, doesn't always justify um, how good it looks. I mean, it's gotcha. very cool because you get like a bullet hole, right? You can put a bullet hole on something and the bullet hole, like if you normal map uh, a bullet hole, yeah, it'll it'll kind of have, it'll light like a bullet hole. But when you go to the left and the right, the texture um, doesn't really feel like it dips in. And when you do a normal gotcha. map, you can make something feel like it really indents got cat hair in my mouth um so that's sort of the neat thing uh it can do and i suppose they can do a bit better uh with that so that's one of the cool things normal mapping you can do you can do those cool indents but it it requires a shit ton of horsepower and i don't know that graphics cards have ever uh hardware optimized it which you'd really want mm. and that's the other thing about normal mapping it uh at specific angles very steep angles it looks it breaks the illusion it looks like horseshit which is too bad because if they'd really evolved that technology if there was a way to fix that you could be normal mapping a whole model and make it feel like it has a billion polygons where really it doesn't have that many um yeah i just don't know how far that technology has moved forward i don't feel like it really has gotcha it's fear one <laughs> i remember that game looking pretty dope but yeah, I can't wait now that I have this PC build going. I, that's one thing I've watched from afar is like all the crazy mods in GTA and they keep modding it. So I definitely want to load this and hopefully it can look as good as this trailer. But um, that's a real test too, to see the gameplay, you know, with all the particles, with the NPCs, with everything happening, how does this, uh, this mod hold up? Because I know a lot of times you'll see a mod and they kind of reduce everything around the area to really help the visuals and help what's going on but if this is if you can just load the regular game and still play it to the the speed that you're able to play it drive around at the same speed and see all the crazy detail like that's pretty amazing i don't think anything that they showed was undoable gotcha on, on a powerful pc it's definitely yeah. i mean you look at gta was already having to be so optimized to look as good as it did even on my ps3 so <laughs> uh it, I, i'm sure they're loading all this stuff in very smartly at runtime it's gonna it's gonna run just fine you just need a powerful rig but gotcha it's doable nice well, i'll make sure and add some extra leds hopefully that will help with the performance <laughs> <laughs> in my mind though yeah that's how that's how i know that pc is powerful it's got a bunch of lights it's good i i don't know that you know decent rigs nowadays come without all the stupid lighting at this point so yeah, I'm going to have to figure it out, put a flashlight in there or something. Just a flashlight? Just <laughs> I don't know, turn it on and off or something. Can't play the, can't play your PC with uh, the lights off or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gavin. Awesome, man. Well, we'll end it there for this week. Uh, where can they find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Drunk Devs. Nice. You can find us on Plastic Heart Pod on Twitter as well. That's it for us this week. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.